Three words that have haunted a small town for five years. It's every town USA, and those things don't happen in every town USA. But it happened in Delphi, Indiana. A chilling discovery. Why Libby? Why Abby? That turned a safe haven into a crime scene. I don't think you have to be embarrassed if you're scared right now. A lot of people in town are scared. Tonight, a case the world refuses to give up on. We told each other we loved each other, and that was the last time I saw him. Following every lead. I still get probably 25 and 40 direct tips a week right here, literally from around the world. And every clue. On the surface, it appears like the police have a lot, right? Trying to unlock the mystery. And yet here we are five years later. Fit the pieces together. We have hope. Together we'll get this guy. Solve the unsolved. We must keep our resolve for Libby and Abby to ensure that good trumps evil. And catch a killer. They're, they're, they're watching. And we'll meet him soon. We'll meet him. A special edition of News Nation Prime starts right now. Live from News Nation headquarters, this is News Nation Prime with Marnie Hughes. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Marnie Hughes. Tonight, we are bringing you a special hour of News Nation Prime. Over the course of the next hour, we are focusing on this one unsolved case that has gripped the country and the world for five years. It centers around the small town of Delphi, Indiana, located a little more than a half an hour north of Indianapolis. Two young girls, best friends, Abby Williams and Libby German, 13 and 14 years old, were out for a walk on a popular hiking trail when they were brutally murdered. Their bodies found five years ago today, on Valentine's Day. From the very beginning, authorities have said this case can and will be solved. They have video and audio of the killer, but this person is still out there, living among us. Someone, somewhere, knows something. Tonight, we are taking you back to Delphi, laying out the case, what we have learned over the last five years. Investigators say this case is not cold, and they are still getting up to 40 tips a week. One of the people leading the investigation, Doug Carter, the superintendent of Indiana State Police, will be joining us for a live, rare interview. But our coverage begins now with investigative correspondent, Rich McHugh. Delphi, Indiana. Population 3000, nestled among a network of parks and wilderness trails, is like many Midwestern towns, quiet and peaceful. But five years ago, that peace was shattered. Thirteen-year-old Abby Williams. It's a scarf. No. It's just pink. And fourteen-year-old Libby German. Best friends and your typical happy-go-lucky eighth graders. On the afternoon of February 13, 2017, Libby asked her older sister Kelsey to drive them to the nature trails. So they just got out of the car and walked down the trail to go to High Bridge. We told each other we loved each other, and that was the last time I saw her. At approximately 2.05 p.m., Libby posts to Snapchat this picture of the Monon High Bridge. At 2.07, she posts this picture of Abby walking across the bridge. It was the last correspondence from either of them. Hours passed, nearing dark, and nobody could reach the girls. So we knew something wasn't quite right, so we said, you know what, we're, we're all going to go to the trails and look, too. Searched along, you know, the hillside and in and around the high bridge area where they'd been dropped off, and that led to the, obviously, the wee early hours. I come home and then grabbed a couple hours, was back down there at daylight. There 
was hundreds and hundreds of people that showed up volunteering to come put them into a search party and, and let them go. I looked up and the coroner's van come driving by and that's when it hit me that they weren't found alive. Authorities found Abby and Libby in a wooded area a half mile upstream from the bridge. The girls had been murdered. What does that do to you as a mother? Well, there's no words for it. I, it in fact, <laughs> affects us hard, you know, as a family. I didn't sleep for a long time. You worry about them dating and driving and going to college, that not going out for a walk on a beautiful February afternoon. Why Libby? Why Abby? Somebody knows. And if you're watching, we'll find you. Authorities released this picture taken on Libby's phone and this chilling audio recorded on Libby's phone. Guys, down the hill. To hear that person's voice, it's creepy. Kind of puts chills down your spine. And they released a sketch of the suspect. It sucks knowing that, like, he's still out there. A lot of people in town are scared. The FBI joined the investigation. Our investment in that investigation has been and continues to be significant. But after one year, no arrests. Until there's somebody arrested, we're interested in almost everybody. Two years after the murders, police released this video of the man, taken by Libby, walking toward them on the bridge. And they released a second sketch of a much younger man. State police saying the case had shifted in a new direction and that the suspect is between the ages of 18 and 40. We believe you are hiding in plain sight. We likely have interviewed you or someone close to you. But two more years passed without an arrest. Then, last month, another twist in the case. Police appealed for tips about a person tied to a social media account with the name Anthony Schatz. They say the man behind the account, Keegan Anthony Klein, was using images of a known male model to catfish young girls into sending nude photos in their home address. Klein was arrested, charged with child solicitation and pornography in unrelated cases. And they asked anyone who ever communicated with the fake online account to come forward. He may have shared uh, inadvertently or intentionally some personal information that could be valuable. Police say the fake online accounts were active in 2016 and 2017, around the time when Libby and Abby were murdered, but they will not confirm whether Libby and Abby communicated with this profile. Do you think it's possible that your sister and Abby were communicating with this account? I think that the account is definitely important and that we have to keep sharing it and putting it out there because for whatever reason, law enforcement thinks it's important. Do you think the authorities are close? I have to hope so. see that little snippet of video and, and you, you listen to that audio, what, what do you hear? What do you see? It's awful. It, it's awful to think that, you know, that was, that was the last thing our girls heard. What is the focus of your investigation right now and what is the evidence telling you? Well, I'm not going to talk about the evidence. The likelihood is that it's somebody from around here. But I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in the place where we are right now. And that's the scary part is that it could be anybody that I see every day. And um, eventually the world's going to know what we do. You know, we're probably all in for some sort of surprise or shock uh, when this all plays out. You say eventually the world is going to know. Does that mean you are close, in your opinion? I think we're closer every day. We're closer every single day. I don't know exactly what that means, but I believe them. They're, they're, they're watching. We'll meet them soon. We'll meet them. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.